Hello, Galaxy! I'm Chris Perillo, and last night I ordered, or pre-ordered, an iPhone 8 Plus. This may very well be the last iPhone or iOS device I ever cared to own, for a lot of reasons. Uh, let me go ahead and address a few of the questions that have come up over and over again, because there seems to be a contingent of people who don't realize I've been talking about hardware and software for a greater part of 20 years. Um, I have no plans on getting or even touching an iPhone 10. Yes, it's iPhone 10, not iPhone X. I know that was confusing, uh, but uh, it's iPhone 10. Some people are saying that I'm merely venting and I'm going to get it anyway. That's not the case for a few different reasons. One, I, I really have no want, need, or desire for what Apple has produced on the surface seeing it at a distance. Now, I realize that some people say you can't understand the usability of a product without actually using it. I would disagree with that. There are a great many products I can look at from afar and say, I don't want that. Because I can tell you outright, I don't want that. I just don't think the notch was well designed. I don't think it was well accommodated in the software, and software is everything to me. It's everything to every platform, really. Uh, and then beyond the notch, then you have the floating... I'm going to try to keep this clean. Um, floating software notch at the bottom of the screen, wherever your bottom is. Uh, moreover, I guess, and, and this is more a, a kind of a tongue-in-cheek, I'm afraid of encouraging Apple... <laughs> I, I, I'm not a skilled photoshop -tician, but I'm afraid the iPhone 11 will be this. It's a fear. Okay, this is a bit egregious. Maybe I'm making my point. You know what? I hate to say it. I would probably be more interested in this <laughs> than the iPhone 10 because of symmetry. Uh, specifically symmetry with a, a screen that I would have to interact with and see and use on a regular basis. So I kind of wanted to talk through a few uh, uh, points and, and not really discuss so much uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the, the grander picture, but specifically why I may have uh, chosen an iPhone 8 Plus uh, and, and why I believe it's going to be my last o iOS device. Sit back, relax, uh, grab a, a cup of whatever you're drinking. Once again, it's going to be a long one. I have to explain this to people who have no idea that I like talking about this kind of stuff, even though I'm kind of done talking about this. There are better things that I could be talking about, like Star Wars. I want to get back to talking about Star Wars. Please let me. Uh, it's going to be a long one. Um, so, in my estimation, like if we were just looking at uh, the iPhone 8 versus the iPhone 10 in terms of what it might provide as a general experience, um, obvious hardware flaws uh, in terms of how they were accommodated notwithstanding, um, I believe, in terms of my general usage patterns or needs, uh, that the uh, iPhone 8 Plus is a near equal to the 10, um, and, I, and I realize it's not an exact equal. I mean, the, the obvious huge difference is that the front-facing camera apparatus is different. Um, I don't know if what it has to offer, that, that front-facing apparatus, is all that compelling for me. I think Face ID looks to be pretty well executed. I, I don't have an issue with Face ID like some people do. Um, I believe Apple may have done that well. Uh, the, uh, uh, the the challenge I have is recognizing the Animoji gimmick and understanding how frequently I would use that. I mean, I, but I, I've, I've also identified over the years when Apple makes something and, and they integrate it, I'm like, huh, well, okay, that'll be interesting for about five minutes. Like, stickers. Or... <laughs> Um, uh, what, what's another good example? Um, uh, the, like the Apple Watch, send your heartbeat uh, to somebody else. I think Animoji is going to fall right in there. Um, fun, but not worth uh, the added cost. And when I'm talking cost, I, I don't just mean the dollar amount. Because quite honestly, if you're going to be buying an iPhone 8 Plus, you're probably in the same market dollar-wise as an iPhone 10. It's not... It's not a huge uh, uh, deal, and quite honestly, a lot of alternatives to all iPhones in terms of flagship devices are right around the same price range, around, generally speaking. Um, the camera, I, I've, I've long said, is, is uh, very important to me. I, uh, you know, have 
really um, enjoyed getting a camera upgrade every uh, iPhone cycle. This has been my primary computer. I mean, I'm using an iPhone right now to record this video. Most of the videos I shoot these days are done specifically on the front-facing camera on the iPhone. It's, it's, it's ample. Um, it works exceedingly well. Uh, and I'm not into complexity with uh, software and processes in, in relation to hardware. I don't want much. Um, but the uh, uh, the idea that I, I would be benefited by the dual optical image stabilization on the front-facing camera, or I guess the outward-facing camera, the non-FaceTime camera, um, I, I don't know if it's going to be that much of a difference to me, or if it's going to be worth let's say closing my eyes every time I have to look at the screen, which won't work because then I can't unlock it. <laughs> they kind of, they really, that, that notch just slaps you in the face. I know some people think they can ignore it. Maybe you can. I'm not one of those people. You are blessed to not see frame drops. If you don't see frame drops, you are blessed. Blessed. Believe it or not, sometimes I wish I was you. Uh you know, I recognize it could take better photos. I recognize there's a different f-stop on the, uh, the the telephoto lens on the uh, iPhone 10 camera versus the iPhone 8, but I just don't know if it's going to make that much of a, a dramatic difference because even over time, if you remember, I barely remember this, when I really wanted to try the iPhone 6S Plus, that's what it was named. I can't remember at this point. There's so many names to keep track of. Um... I couldn't stand using the device because it lagged behind the iPhone 6S in terms of raw performance. Like it just couldn't, it chunked along in terms of performance, dropping frames, animations, uh, skipping. It just was not, it did not, not have ample hardware to power the software. The story of iOS effectively since iOS 7. Um, you know, I, I, I found that even the camera difference between the iPhone 6S Plus and the 6S was not a huge deal. So I, I'm not willing to ignore what I believe are, are a catastrophic failures, not just in UI accommodation around a, a general user experience as presented in the hardware design, um, to be able to have a what could be argued as a better camera. I mean, we've got in both the iPhone 8 Plus and in the uh, uh, and in the 10 uh, a reworked I ISP. So. You know, beyond that, <coughs> different calibration, uh, like from what we've seen in the past. And the question is, is what's the delta? Like, is there that much of a leap in between those two things where on an average shot or a shot that I might take, I'm going to be benefited by uh, the 10s apparatus over uh, the 8 pluses? And I'm not sure I, I can make that call. And even if I could, someone even on Twitter, and, and, and I appreciated the, all, all the tweets, uh, all the support, actually, that I, I've been seeing in social, it's giving me hope that I'm not the only one who sees this as a problem, um, asking, hey, you know, given that you uh, uh, really focus on the camera, so to speak, didn't really mean the play on words there, um, are you willing to overlook these problems? And my response, and I thought about that, I'm like, that's a really solid question. Like, am I willing? And, and the, the scenario that, that I uh, came up with, or a metaphor, if you will, uh, it would be like, that's like really enjoying swimming, and swimming, in this, being in a swimming pool, I made this sound so much more poetic in a tweet. Uh, wanting to swim in a swimming pool that has a turd floating in it. You gonna do that? You can ignore the turd. Turd's still floating there. You really want to swim? You love swimming! Huh? Look at all that water that doesn't have turd in it! But there's that turd just floating there, mocking you. That's that's the equivalent, and and we're not necessarily just talking about the notch or the notch or the notch or the notch that you might be able to zoom out of, uh, the, even the software notch, the bar, the floating turd, <laughs> oh, on the iPhone 10 interface for discoverability, watering down the the value of having a full a, an allegedly full screen device. Sorry, I don't buy it. It's not all screen. I don't buy it. I won't buy it. Um, I, I'm not willing to, to look past those uh, problems because I already know the type of person I am. I know that would annoy the heck out of me. Um, moreover, you know, it was it was an easy tell as I was demonstrating in one of the longer videos that I've shot this week. Um, 
citing examples that are very easily found. If you go to Twitter, look, follow my feed, and you'll see plenty of them, just like with iOS slop. Uh, you know, uh, I, and I, by the way, I will plan on doing like a why I can't recommend an iPhone 10. And I think that'll be a separate video, uh, just so you know, and I'll, I'll cite some of those examples specifically. But uh, landscape mode looks to be just outright poorly executed. And it's not the idea. It's the execution. How long have I been saying that? If you've never heard me speak before, first of all, I apologize for my voice. I hate my voice. Second of all, I apologize for my lack of video editing skills. Uh, third of all, it's not the idea. It's the implementation. This is why these Jack and any responses, well, you should buy that phone because it's had that feature. I don't care about the damn feature. I care about the implementation. That's one of the reasons why I was driven into Apple uh, in the first place. But now, going on several years, they have yet to nail implementation. Uh, like in terms of, of, of features. They, just, they, they throw a feature out there and then kind of polish it over time-ish. Uh, but even in final versions uh, that, that we see, uh, quality control is not Apple's uh, bailiwick. Did you, not anymore. Uh, so, so landscape mode, you know, was another driver for, for me to, to have chosen easily, uh, the iPhone eight plus over the 10. And it's not that, um, I, a, I believe, and I, as I understand uh, empirically speaking, maybe 10% of smartphone users use the phone regularly, apart from maybe watching video in landscape mode. So it's a, it's a fraction of the use case. But here's my problem with that. When I talk about UX, it's the fact that the feature of going into landscape still exists on the iPhone 10, and it looks the way it does. It's a feature of landscape. But look at how they implemented landscape. You think you can minimize these quirks that they throw in your direction. Hey, maybe you can. Maybe you're willing to. I, I, I'm not one of them. I, I'm telling you my, my reasoning as to why... I, I went with the iPhone 8 Plus, and I, I, again, I'll get through the second part of the equation of why it may be my last iOS device. Um, the uh, uh, oh, uh, another thing to, to note in terms of like differences between the iPhone 10 and the, the 8 Plus, uh, I keep seeing people applauding the portrait mode on the 10, but uh, the, the iPhone 8 Plus also has portrait mode, like the the beta thing that they were showing off. By the way, the the what, what was the other thing called the uh, the yeah the portrait mode with all the thing that you could do with the, the depth of field effect, even out of beta, that thing sucked. It, it's, it's, a, it's, it's not exactly a gimmick. I know some people have a great time with it, but I think even in the sample image they used in the keynote, I, I thought it was incredibly, like, poor. Like, I, I, I mean, you can see, like, how the woman's hair was kind of fuzzed at certain spots. I'm like, that's, that's not... That's not good. I mean, I certainly wouldn't want to be a... That wouldn't want to... I wouldn't want that photo. I wouldn't want to keep that photo. It's, it just... It's... It, it snaps you out of the illusion that you've, you've taken a, a shot with a better lens. And, and Apple has not implemented that feature very well. So I don't know if, if even what they plan on doing is going to work all that well either. Or if the new camera apparatus on either one, we're talking about the outward facing camera apparatus or in the lenses, the dual lenses, is going to make that much of a difference. I, I don't know. But understand this, and this is, this is a huge thing. Apple's must have, Apple's pulled the wool over so many people's eyes by telling the truth. And, and, and they said, hey, this feature is on both phones. It's not just something for the 10. The something for the 10 is specifically the front-facing camera that has the different apparatus so that you can do depth effects and, and all that stuff. But um, this is where I make an, a note on, on Animoji not just being a, a gimmick, but this is, this is something that struck me as odd. And, and, and uh, I, I was listening to a podcast uh, uh, j just yesterday where they brought up the same feeling I had when I was watching the keynote. Uh, f uh, Craig Federighi was basically demoing that, that. Look at that new amazing camera. And he used Snapchat, okay? And I watched him use Snapchat with this new array of fancy lenses. And I'm like, that looks exactly like the Snapchat I used two years ago on two devices ago. It wasn't that compelling. Snapchat nailed it in software. Apple added, from what I could tell, nothing to that mix with their expensive, fancy apparatus, notch, thing, camera, whatever. Um, it, it, go back and watch the demo if you if you missed it. Like that 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 demo specifically, the Snapchat demoing the le new lenses. 
looked absolutely nothing. Uh, nothing apart from what I've seen before, what I've used before. It's, I'm like, oh yeah, it's a new care, but it looks the same as the old. So the, the Snapchat face thing demoed just as well as what you already likely have. So like, why would you, why would you make that leap? I, I don't know. Um, screen ex experts. Now this is another thing that kind of dissuaded me. I uh, just, you know, again, adding on top. Now, this is yet to be seen. We, we haven't uh, seen any, uh, you, know, uh, 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 you know, analysis, deep analysis on this, but I've seen at least two people who understand, uh, two people I trust, who understand screen technology in terms of usability, suggesting that the, uh, uh, the screen on the 10, while it's OLED, could be pentile, like a diamond pattern pentile. Could be. Could and if anything, this is a warning. Like, they, it, it, it may not be as good as you may think it is, uh, or, or may not have as much legibility as you would hope it would in comparison. Yes, it has benefits, too, uh, but it may also be coming with drawbacks. This, if anything, if you're leaning towards a 10, hey, man, number one, you know, I understand that I'm probably very grating on you. I'm not trying to convince anybody that, that your personal choice and your personal beliefs are wrong. I'm just saying... I would strongly recommend waiting to see that for yourself because that to me is the second, ins actually the third insult to the 10 screen. The first insults, well, sorry, fourth insult to the 10 screen. <laughs> I keep thinking of insults, uh, but they, Apple did it. Not, don't look at, don't get mad at me. Don't blame me. You, know, you can make fun of me all you want. I, I didn't make the damn thing. Uh, the, uh, uh, the first thing's the notch. The second one's the floating turd. Uh, I gotta come up with a better word for that. Uh, the third thing would be the misalignments of of elements in the ears that flank the uh, uh, the uh, the the inset. Uh, it's not really a notch, but that's what people are calling it. Um, you know, the the permaturid at the top. Um, they're misaligned. Like they look really awkwardly placed. Like a, an a, an intern just slapped the time up there, and then a couple of icons got squeezed in there. And uh, we got we got to ship something. Um, and then. When you swipe down, sorry, I got to get to the fourth one. The fourth insult to the screen uh, would be the, you know, potentially a, a lesser quality uh, um, screen in comparison. Um, you know, in OLED, it could lead in some cases, but it, it's not going to, it, it's not going to be, I think, amazingly better than what I might have experienced, let's say, in an, uh, in an iPhone to this point, a classic iPhone. Um, another thing, iOS, and I, I've seen this in the final or the gold master build of uh uh, iOS on both the iPad as well as the iPhone. Uh, iOS 11 outright is glitchy. It, it really is. Uh, it, but this is this is not a surprise. Like that's usually how it is. Every release is glitchy. It's just that every big point release is more glitchy than subsequent you know minor releases. Uh, but it's 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 pretty it's it's glitchy. It, it, some of the glitches will never go away. Some glitches get go away, but then get replaced with two more glitches, like layout nightmares and, 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 uh, consistency issues and animation problems. I mean, it's just, I, I've documented these over the years. I don't have enough patience to, to, to redocument these things. I don't want to relitigate it. Suffice to say, iOS continues forward with slop. And this is where I'm kind of dovetailing into, this may very well be my last iOS device. Like, I just don't see it getting any better. Um, even with, new features coming out. It's not the feature, it's the implementation. Uh, and and if, if Apple's head is specifically messing with UX where the screen's concerned, outright, just for the sake of moving forward and bragging rights, for what? I don't know. They have a bigger notch than the essential, I guess. Okay, brag about it. I, I think both are a mistake. Um, the uh, 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 But the fact that, you know, it's it's not getting better... It, it, it concerns me. So then you might ask, and maybe you have. Well, then wh why do you keep getting them then, Chris? Uh, what did I say yesterday or the day before? It's kind of like, you know, Ace Ventura with two spears in his legs. Ah! 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 That is, to me, the battle between Apple's ecosystem and everything else. And, and, and at least I know this devil. Uh, it, 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 that's not a good position to be in. It's not a good feeling. I, I don't feel like I'm being held captive. Uh, it's just that it's not just one device. I have to understand and recognize that it, it's this device as it interacts with that one and this one and that one and somebody else's and this one. So it, it's beyond just this singular experience, which 
it 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 haunts me. Uh, it perturbs me because my fear is legit that that Apple won't have perfected uh, the design of the hardware, or worse yet, now consider that uh, inset as a part of their branding to differentiate themselves, so that when someone looks at a phone, they know it's an iPhone. I, I tell you, it will it will say a lot about a person when I if if and when I see them holding on to a, 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 an iPhone 10 with that monstrosity. Uh, floating on top or the side, depending on they're holding it, how, how they're holding it. It's an embarrassment. Uh, I'm not the only person to say that. Uh, far from it. Uh, even people who seem to even want to get the 10 have lambasted Apple for, for what they've done, e even though th th they still want the 10. I can't. I, there's, there's no way. Like, I, I would not be, to me, if I said all those things about the 10 and then still got the 10, I would tell you, you should never trust another thing I say. You should never trust anything I say about a good user experience and a good user interface, ever, if I did that. I'm just, keep that in mind with these pending reviews that gloss over the things that I'm talking about, because I've been talking about them for years. It started with iOS 7. You know, I, I took my lumps. Chris, sit back, relax. It'll get better. It's just beta. It'll improve. It'll be better. iOS 8 will improve it. iOS 9 will improve it. iOS 10 will improve it iOS 11 will improve it. Are you sensing a pattern? I have. So now I have to, you know, really kind of consider some, 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 some alternatives. And I, it's not an easy decision. It's not a quick decision. It's, it's going to take consideration. Uh, but I am that much closer to that consideration after the past few experiences I've had with new iOS devices, cutting edge iOS devices with all the latest fancy hardware and everything. Uh, it, it's not the hardware that impresses me. It's what you do with that hardware that impresses me. It's always, it's always been that way. And I, I, I think that uh, it, this may be it. That doesn't mean it's it. I'm done. I'm, it's over. I'm switching. Uh, look, I'm not, believe it or not, I'm trying not to be dramatic about it. Yeah, I'm going to get passionate about it. What do you expect? This is my daily computer. The phone is a, it, it is a computer. The smartphone is more than just a phone. It is now, it, it's, it's your, it's your lifeline. If you don't have your phone, how do you stay connected, right? It's, it's more than just a phone. It's culture. And that to me, it means something. That means something. I have to make a choice that's going to work well for me. And, and that's why I can't project on to, to anybody else. I can only, I, all I can do is just lay out some facts. Uh, for example, um, this is not something that I was in, intending on, on, on posting, uh, right now, but this is just another fact. I really, I, I know I need to do a separate video on why I can't recommend the iPhone 10. So stay tuned for that, but I'm going to pull up a tweet, uh, that was shared today. Um, John, thank you so much for tweeting this to me. I really appreciate all the interactivity we get across social, especially when I don't feel alone, especially when people aren't getting mad at me for problems I didn't create. So check this out. Let me just go ahead and give you another demonstration about how Apple's lack of quality control is prevalent in software, not necessarily just hardware, because for the most part, they've, they've done well, very well with hardware. I'm not debating that. Um, but their software prowess is lacking. So not only do I find the data, the, uh, let's see if I can zoom in here. Can I do that on Twitter in the Twitter app, please? Okay. Hey, Marquez Brownlee. I, I like your hands. Um, well manicured by the way, Marquez. Uh, so, so, so this is, this is a, a 10. Okay. And, uh, hopefully I have his permission to use his hand. He's got wonderful hands, better hands than mine. Um, the, uh, uh when you swipe, so not only are the, those indicators and the time and the, uh, uh, the, the status like signal indicators on, on this side, on the, uh, 10, you know, when it's not in, in this, this, uh, control center mode, uh, not only are they awkwardly placed between the ears, but check this out. So you've got a, a different point size with the data B L look at where they put the signals. Instead of being over here, like they are without the control center, they're over here. <laughs> Details. Details, Apple. Details. Details, man. I didn't think it was that hard. I, I really, I really didn't. Like, who doesn't see that? But they can fix it in software. They can fix a lot in software. They don't. Will they? I don't know. I, I have no idea if they'll fix that. I, I, I'm just saying, if they can't even nail that, how do you think they're going to handle the rest of the software on this, uh, on this device, on this cutting-edge $1,000-plus product that they can't even 
They can't even manage... I can think of no better example to just end the video as to why the iPhone 8 is likely going to be. Likely. Possibly my last iOS product. Because that's where Apple's head's at. They can't, they can't even figure this out. Um, not to mention, oh, I didn't even point out, if you missed that, there's uh, uh, spacing is uh, also awkward. It's been awkward on, on the home screen for years, but the spacing in the f fonts from the distance of the top... Details that Apple doesn't see. Because if they saw them, they'd fix them. And if they did see them, then they're ignoring them. And if you don't have a good user experience on a device, what do you have? I ask you that. It's a serious question. If, you're, if your device doesn't give you a good user experience, and that to me is consistency or lack thereof, that's not a good experience. If your device doesn't give you a good experience, what good is it? Some people are they're willing to put up with anything. Windows Vista, Windows 8, Windows Millennium Edition, piece of junk that they bought just for kicks that they have to justify their decision, even though it's a horrible experience. I tell you, you don't know, you don't know a, a bad experience until you've had a good one. And this is, this is actually where I want to end this. That's what pulled me into the iPhone. It was dramatically better than everything out there. It was night and day. Now, mm, I don't know so much anymore. Google's nailed uh, UX better than Apple has, and it's definitely got a ways to go. T absolutely has it UI uh, nailed down, at least with the uh, latest uh, iterations of Android. Um, not perfect. Nothing is. S s s spear in one knee or spear in the other. But the thing that drew me into a Apple in the first place, the thing that drew me into the iPhone OS, the iPhone in the first place, was a, a good experience. You didn't realize how bad other things were until you had something really good. And that's what the iPhone was. And I recognize, and this is a, a thought that really kind of came to me yesterday, and I, I've never really vocalized it before, but I've never really liked Apple. I've never really loved Apple. Uh... I've appreciated what it's done and what it's enabled and how it's moved the ball forward. I appreciate the advancements in technology uh, that, that it's brought to us. I think it's, Apple has contributed greatly to our global culture for the better. For the better. I don't love Apple. I loved Apple under Steve Jobs. And that's, that's, that's probably what pains me most in terms of... Uh, um, you know, where I sit today and why I'm saying the things that I'm saying. The, the, the iPhone no longer enchants me. And it's not about features, man. It's, it's the implementation. That's what was so amazing that I look forward to every year. Now it's, it's perfunctory. It's a routine. It's the same thing. It's not about boredom. I'm not bored. It's not boring. It's, it's just not what it used to be at all. So why would I keep doing it? If I can't find, if I can't find a spear that hurts less, I would hurt myself more by just dropping this stuff wholesale. I can't. Um, I just don't know how the next year is going to play out, uh, you know, in, in relation to that. Um, uh, suffice it to say, I am watching certain industry announcements with great interest. Um, it could happen. I don't know. We'll see. Um, there, there'd be a lot that I would have to change, and some of the things that I may not be able to change, and so... We will see, but, um, yeah, uh, that's, that's what I wanted to say in this video. And the next one I want to do on why I can't recommend an iPhone 10, um, I, I actually wrote kind of a, 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 it ended up kind of being a blog post of sorts as a response to a Mac rumors forum thread that someone else started said, Hey, Chris Perillo is lamb or ripping this apart. And other, of course people came out of the woodwork who I'm like, dude, I'd say, I'd tell you the same thing. Uh, so I had to start, I mean, I said, look, I'm, I'm a nobody, dude. I don't matter. I'm irrelevant. Um, I'm just a guy who loves good experiences. That's all. So I was trying to tell him, just take me out of the equation. But here's the thing. Even though I said that right up front, what happened was interesting. There were no counter arguments to what I put out there, either in the video 
per se, or in, certainly in, in what I, I just jumped in. I said, look, here, let me just go ahead and describe. Let me flesh it out for you for those who don't want to be, be annoyed by my video or the sound of my voice. Um, the only pushback I got were personal attacks. Like, oh God, this guy sucks. Or this guy's done this. And who is this guy, right? I'm like, dude, take me out of the equation. I have nothing to do with this. All I'm trying to do is just tell you how I see it. Giving you a, a, a direct and honest opinion uh, and, and giving you actual information to, so that you can be better armed to make a decision that you may be needing to make. I'm just saying, like, it's, 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 it's adding up to a whole bunch of no to me as far as the iPhone 10 is concerned, and I'll, I'll dive into that in, in the next video here. It's going to be a long one, too. These are more like podcasts, right? But I, I like doing video. I, I like seeing y'all. Well, I, I, I just find it easier to do video. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. I love you. I appreciate you. And may the force be with you.